Hello, this is Victor Perez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Maya to color manage a project using ACES. So the first thing we have to do is to turn on the color management system. To do so, we are going to Windows here in the top menu, Settings and Preferences, Preferences. This is going to open this window, OK? Now, let's go to the categories. And we need to go to the settings category. And inside the settings category, you have the color management. OK? My project has been already configured to use ACES. But if you didn't, what you are going to have is this off. So this is the aspect of your window when you didn't set up the ACES workflow. So what we are going to do is just enable the color management, and that is going to offer you this open color config path, which is just where the configuration of the open color IO, which is the platform, the color management system, is going to be a source. So by default, in Maya, you have this configuration. And using, for this example, Maya 2023. So this is the version available in here. But you can change this file and source any other file that you can download from the platform itself. For instance, in OpenColor.io, you can go to the website and download the configuration. But remember, make sure you are using the same version as everybody else in the pipeline. You cannot have a different version because that can create discrepancies. So for that, this is telling you what is the version that is being sourced from that file, OK? By default, you can work with this, and it's not a problem at all. But you need to know what you are doing. So that's why I'm telling you this. This is the OpenColor.io config version. OK, now the next thing is going to be the color transform preferences. The first is the rendering space which is, in this case, ACES CG. Remember that if you are color managing a project using ACES, this is the color space that you should use for rendering. You can select others that you have in here, for instance, the scene linear for Rec. 709 or sRGB, that is another color space, and then you have other available. If you are using the ACES workflow, you are expected to use the ACES CG. So you need to have a very good reason to have another color space that is listed in here. And just to clarify, yes, this is the color space used like the main space for ACES, but this is not the color space that we use for rendering. We are going to use this for exporting for others are interchanged with other facilities or other softwares. But even if this is the ACES compliant color space, when you are rendering, you need to use ACES CG for the reasons that I explained in the book. So we are going to leave this as it is. Then the display. This is a output device transform or ODT. So for this, you just need to know what is the color space that you are using in your display. For instance, in a regular computer monitor, you are going to have the sRGB, which is why this is the default option. But make no mistake, you cannot assume something. So I will suggest you to ensure what is the color space that you are currently using. And that is going to depend on the monitor or the projector or the TV or the whatever the device you are using for displaying the images. OK, so here you have different options. Make sure you are using the right one. In my case, because I'm using an sRGB monitor, I'm going to leave this. Remember, this is the ACES ODT. Then the view. What is the view? The view is a LMT, so it's a look transform. For this, you have different options. You have the ACES 1.0 for SDR video, 
which is the one that I'm going to use, but you have others. Again, you need to have a reason for put another, and you are expected to use the default unless otherwise indicated by someone managing the color of the project. Okay, so this is going to be the default option. So just to debrief this area, is actually going to be very, very easy. Just make sure this is enabled, and then just make sure the display that you are using is just matching the color space in here. For the rest, you can leave the default options. Once you have that, click Save, and that is going to set up the project. Now, we have to check the color management in Arnold Render Panel, just to be sure and also to give you the option to understand. So for that, we are going to the top menu, Arnold, Render. And this is going to open the rendering view for Arnold, okay? I'm just going to stop it to avoid these two use resources. And for that, what we need to be aware is the settings that we are going to check in here. So this is going to give me the settings for this uh, panel, and I'm going to ensure the display is actually the right one. So the gamma, unless you want to change something to display something to view, okay, but this should be one. No changes in the exposure because that is going to have a different look again. So the default is one and zero. One for the gamma, zero for the exposure. And the view transform, remember, is the last section that we review in the color management panel before. So here you have the same. So you can display this using other options that you have in here. Just to keep things uh, clear, this is a LMT. Um, the LMT is going to be applied before the ODT. The ODT is the transform for the display Okay, just to ensure the uh, color is aligned to the display that you're using. So the display and the software are talking the same language, but the view transform is a transformation that is happening before that transformation. Okay, it's something that is going to affect the look of that render. Okay, and remember that in here is just for viewing purposes. So it's not going to change the actual qualities of the render. It's just how you are going to see that in your monitor. So that is the setting that we are going to, to check and something that you have available always to change if you need to display, check, or something else. Okay, so I'm just going to close this window and we are going to the next thing, which is the viewport. Something important to keep in mind is that even the viewport, which is the area that you use for work, is also being color managed. And that option of the color management is here on top. First of all, you have two areas. The first one is this one, which is the color management. So you can switch off the color management or you can put it on. And in here is going to give you again the view transform. Okay, the LMT. So with this, you can have a display look directly on your viewport. Of course, this is just a very orientative, just to give you a, a taste of how the render is going to look at the end. Another thing that uh, we need to keep in mind is that this thing is a combined ODT and LMT. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that and the ACES 1.0 SDR has video sRGB. So this sRGB is the ODT, okay? As you can see, the ODT is going to be displayed on every option that you have in there, okay? So this is reminding me that this is the LMT and this is the ODT in that particular order. First that and then this. If you change in the color management uh, settings, in, as I showed you in the beginning, uh, the display, that is going to be reflected in here, okay? So the next thing that you have to keep in mind when you are working in a color managed workflow is the 
texture should be import using the right color space. So for changing the textures, I'm going to give you uh, an idea of this. So I'm going to use this sphere. I'm just going to bring it here. Um, in order to, to assign the textures, this is something that, that you know, but I'm just going to, to go step by step. Okay, so right click, assign new material. In here, we are going to the Arnold shader. Okay. And we are going to use a AI standard surface, this thing, okay? That is going to apply that standard surface in, in here, and that is going to open the attribute editor. So we are going to this standard surface, so we are going to edit the properties of that uh, texture. And what I need to check in here for in order to get the, the color is whatever is the texture you are going to apply. So let's go to the base, for instance. So we are going here to select the, the file. And we are going in this Create Render menu. We are going to a 2D texture. And we are going to select, as I said, a file. OK? So in here, in the image name, of course, you are going to select uh, the file that you want to apply as the texture to grab that element. But for me, what is important is this, the color space. So just make sure that the color space is going to match the color space of the bitmap, the texture that you are using in there. Because this is a input device transform. So you need to make sure the texture is going to be interpreted in the right way, okay? So if you are using a sRGB texture, that is very common, you can use that. If you are using linear textures or whatever, just make sure you are using the right uh, transformation in here. Failing to do that can make the texture look wrong, and in consequence, the render is going to look wrong, but maybe the project settings and everything else has been set correctly, but the texture is not. So try to ensure if you have any funny look at the render, try to ensure the whole pipeline. So this is a critical area, okay? So once you have the texture in the right color space, you can assume that if something is not working, maybe it's something that you set up uh, on the, the software level, maybe on Arnold or something else. Okay, so that is for the texture. Just before to finish, I would like to spend a few words about the TX files that Arnold is going to generate to optimize the textures that are being imported into Maya. So let's go to the render settings panel for Arnold, which is in here. And we are going to Arnold render. And in here, we are going to the textures. Okay, so something that is very common is to use the auto-convert textures to TX. The TX uses a linear color workspace, so when the bitmaps of the textures are converted into TX files, they are linearized. So ensure you set the right color space transform, or IDT, to the source image to preserve a consistent workflow, as I said before. So this is something, this transformation, that is going to be embedded when you are going to linearize the textures to get converted into the TX. Of course, this is something that the software is going to do automatically when you have this option on, but ensure the color space is coherent in here. Because if not, the linearization that is going to happen in here is going to be grown. Hence, everything else, again, is going to look wrong. So that's all we are going to need to set up the project in Maya to work in an ACES workflow. This has been Victor Perez. Thanks for watching.